Welcome! This video will guide you through the disassembly, repair, and reassembly of the mechanically sealed universal seal pump, where the seal is located in the stuffing box. This series includes the following Viking pump models. As always, consult the applicable technical service manual for important safety information before you begin. A copy of the latest revision can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, follow the correct safety procedures. It is critical to know what liquid the pump has been handling and the precautions necessary to safely handle the liquid. Always read and follow the safety warnings in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. Copies of the latest service manuals can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. You may require the following tools for disassembly and repair. SAE wrenches, Allen wrenches, and a soft-headed hammer. A complete listing of tools and part numbers can be found in the service manual. For newer pumps, the seal kit and repair kit part numbers can be found on a hang tag on the pump. For older pumps, or if the tag has been removed, contact your local authorized Viking pump distributor with the model and serial number of the pump to obtain these part kit numbers. The pumps covered in this video are component sealed pumps, where the seal is located in the stuffing box area of the pump bracket, held in place with set screws. The seal kit includes the mechanical seal, gaskets, bearing, collars, lip seals, and associated hardware. The rebuild kit includes a replacement idler and bushing assembly, head and pin assembly, bracket bushing, and associated hardware. Take care when opening the kit so as not to cut or damage these repair parts. Mark the head and casing before disassembly to ensure proper reassembly. Remove the head cap screws or nuts. On larger pumps, jack screws should be used to back the head away from the casing. Remove the head by tilting it backward to prevent the idler from falling off the idler pin. Insert a brass bar or a piece of hardwood in the port opening and between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Bend up a tang of the lock washer and, with a spanner wrench, remove the lock nut and lock washer from the shaft. Loosen two set screws in the face of the bearing housing and remove the bearing housing assembly from the bracket. Remove the pair of half round rings under the inner spacer collar from the shaft. Note that H and HL size pumps don't have these rings. Loosen the nuts to remove the seal holder. Remove the seal holder. Remove the seal seat. Piping and or plugs will need to be removed to access the set screws of the mechanical seal. Loosen the set screws in the mechanical seal rotary member. There could be up to four set screws depending on the seal type. The rotor and shaft assembly can now be removed from the pump. A soft-headed hammer may be required to tap on the end of the shaft for removal. Take care in removing the rotor and shaft to avoid damaging the bracket bushing. Remove the rotating seal components and seal set collar from the seal chamber. Loosen the two radial set screws in the flange of the bearing housing and with a spanner wrench, unscrew the outer end cap. Remove the outer end cap with the lip seal and outer bearing spacer collar. Remove the bearing, lip seal, and inner bearing spacer collar from the bearing housing. Remove the socket head cap screws connecting the relief valve to the head. Remove the relief valve gasket. Clean the rotor hub and casing bore. Make sure both are free of grit or dirt. Inspect the pump parts for wear, particularly critical parts such as the idler pin, idler bushing, bracket bushing, idler gear, rotor, and casing. Check parts for nicks, burrs, and excessive wear. Replace any worn components. Before installing the new bracket bushing, press out the existing bushing in the bracket. 
Bushings with lubrication grooves should be installed with the groove at the top or 12 o'clock position. Carbon graphite bushings require extreme care to avoid breaking the bushing during installation. For carbon graphite bushings, use a lubricant and make sure that the bushing is started straight. Use a press to completely install the bushing in one continuous motion. Starting and stopping will crack the bushing. Lubricate the shaft and inner diameter of the shaft bushing. Slide the rotor and shaft assembly into the casing. Install relief valve gaskets onto the head. Use a gasket sealant if available. Be sure that the end of the relief valve points in the same direction as when it was removed from the old head. It should point toward the suction port of the pump. Attach the relief valve onto the head. Install and tighten the socket head cap screws. Coat the idler pin with light oil and place the idler and bushing on the idler pin in the head. Place a 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch head gasket on the pump head. Reinstall the head and idler gear, ensuring the proper location of the pin and crescent. The idler pin, which is offset in the pump head, must be positioned toward and equally distant between the port connections to allow proper flow of liquid through the pump. Tighten the head cap screws evenly. Start the set collar on the shaft. Make sure that the rotor and shaft are positioned against the head. Locate the set collar so that the set screws are directly below the seal access holes on the side of the bracket. Tighten all set screws to secure it to the shaft. Screw in the pipe plug into the bracket access holes. Place the tapered installation sleeve on the shaft. Install the washer and spring. Coat the rotor shaft, tapered installation sleeve, and inside the rotary member of the seal with a generous amount of light oil. Start the rotary member on the shaft and ease it over the tapered installation sleeve. Avoid touching the seal faces. On the stationary seal seat, lubricate the outer diameter of the O-ring gasket. Make sure to place the lapped surface of the stationary face toward the rotary member of the seal. Press the seal seat into the bore until the back, unlapped face is flush with the bore. Install the seal holder, cap screws, and nuts and tighten securely. Remove the tapered installation sleeve from the shaft. Install the lip seal in the bearing housing with the lip toward the end of the shaft. Install the lip seal into the end cap with the lip toward the end of the shaft. Pack the bearing with grease and push it into the bearing housing. Insert the nylon slugs. Install the outer bearing spacer collar into the outer end cap and turn the end cap into the bearing housing until it's tight against the bearing.
Tighten the two radial set screws to lock the end cap in position. For tapered roller bearings, see the appropriate technical service manual for lip serial orientation and the proper method for applying preload. Slide the inner spacer collar over the shaft with the recessed end facing the rotor. Place the pair of half round rings on the shaft and slide the inner bearing spacer collar over the half round rings to lock them in place. Install the bearing housing. H and HL size pump bearing spacer collars are not recessed and do not have the half round rings. Put the lock washer and lock nut on the shaft. Insert a length of hardwood or brass through the port opening between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Tighten the lock nut to 50 to 70 foot-pounds of torque for size H and HL pumps or 100 to 130 foot-pounds of torque for larger pump sizes. Bend one tang of the lock washer into the slot of the lock nut. If the tang does not line up with the slot, tighten the lock nut until it does. Failure to tighten the lock nut or engage the lock washer tang could result in early bearing failure and cause damage to the pump. Tighten or loosen the bearing housing until the rotor shaft can be turned by hand with a slight noticeable drag. This point is known as the zero end clearance. Mark the position of the bearing housing with respect to the casing. Using the measurement from the table in the technical service manual, make a second mark on the casing, left of the first mark, at the distance indicated. In this example, we require three thousandths of an inch end clearance on a model HL4124A pump, so the mark is made three quarters of an inch away. Rotate the thrust bearing assembly counterclockwise until the bearing housing mark aligns with this new casing mark. Tighten the two self-locking set screws in the outboard face of the bearing housing with equal force against the bracket. The pump end clearance is now set and locked. Be sure the shaft can rotate freely. If not, back off an additional length on the outside diameter and check again. Your mechanically sealed universal seal pump with seal located in the stuffing box is fully repaired and ready to be put back into service. Lubricate all grease fittings with multi-purpose grease NLGI number two and follow the suggested maintenance located in the appropriate technical service manual for a long, trouble-free service life. If you still have any questions regarding this or other Viking Pump products, please contact your local authorized Viking Pump distributor or visit us on the web at vikingpump.com. Thank you.